Hey folks, George here. This time we're going to continue our discussion of censorship, pornography, hate speech, and all of those moral issues by examining Helen E. Longino's article, Pornography, Oppression, and Freedom. Helen Longino starts her article by reminding us of the obvious. It's immoral to cause injury or to violate another person or people. Sex, by the way, which doesn't injure somebody, is not immoral. After all, adultery isn't immoral because people have sex with each other. Rather, adultery is immoral because it breaks promises that you make with other people. Regarding pornography, however, pornography is immoral because it is harmful to people. It's not the sex in the pornography that's harmful, but rather what pornography does to people, which is pornography harms people. Now, for this purpose, Longino has to give us her definition of pornography, or at least what she's talking about when she's talking about pornography. Her definition of pornography is, pornography is that which degrades and demeans the role and status of the human female as a mere sex object. By the way, with this definition in mind, she's not going to say that all sexually explicit material is pornography. If, for example, there is mutual respect and dignity and the respect of personhood, which is portrayed in some work, then it is not pornography. And there's plenty of works that are sexual in nature that have and portray mutual respect, dignity, and respect for personhood. Thus, that's not what she's talking about. That's not the porn that she's talking about. Instead, she's talking about pornography which violates the personhood of women. It endorses degrading women. In doing this, pornography might portray physical harm or psychological coercion. That is, even if a woman consents to participating in a pornographic film, it is still degrading to women. Thus, it is wrong and harmful. Again, it's not the sex in the pornography that's bad, but rather the dehumanizing portrayal of women as mere sex objects. That's the wrongness of pornography. To spell this out explicitly, pornography lies. It tells lies. Pornography says that women are mere sex objects. Pornography denies that women are independently human. Pornography denies that women are equal to men. That's the wrong that pornography does. It's in these telling of lies that pornography is morally wrong and ultimately thus should be censored. Here's uh, Longino going even a step further. Longino says that research might suggest that there is a correlation between exposure to pornography and violence against women. But Longino's honest here. She does say, listen, more research is needed. We can't exactly depend on that uh, empirical claim, but there is research to suggest the correlation between pornography and violence against women. The greater problem is the acceptance of pornography by mass media. That is, since pornography is allowed in society, thus we all endorse the violence and the lies that pornography tells about women. And that's the problem with pornography. To really sum it up, Longino suggests that pornography harms women in three ways. Number one, it encourages violence against women. Number two, it lies about women. Number three, it reinforces the oppression of women. Since pornography creates these real harms, it should not be protected by free speech. It should not be protected by free speech because pornography promotes harm and is and creates harm. Longino acknowledges that there are three counter-arguments to her claims. That first counter-argument suggests that 
pornography invades people's private lives. Longina says, slow down. Pornography is not private. Why not? Because it's sold and manufactured in the public sphere. And in that regard, we have a right to regulate it and censor it and not say that it's merely what you do in private. It isn't what you do in private. It's created in public. It's sold in public. The second counterargument that Longino responds to is that pornography is protected by free speech. She says, slow down. After all, free speech is not absolute. There's lots of restrictions on free speech, right? The most famous example is that you cannot scream fire in a crowded theater in order to find a seat so that everybody leaves and you have an empty seat for yourself. That is not protected speech. So free speech is not absolute. Furthermore, violent speech is not protected. That's the whole point. There's lots of speech that isn't protected. Since pornography violates the rights of women and makes them unequal, pornography should not be protected speech. That's exactly Longino's point. The third counterargument that Longino addresses is that since people's right to view pornography will be violated, so much censorship will follow. Longino says, slow down. There's always limits to censorship. And Longino admits there should be limits to censorship. We shouldn't censor everything. The goal, after all, is the independence and equality for women. With that in mind, pornography shall be banned. That's why Strawson's worry that uh, feminist literature by Bell Hooks, for example, will not be censored. Or, uh, in the other example, that uh, reproductive rights literature, talking about uh, reproductive sexual health, will not be banned because this is only about equality for women and protecting women. Yes, only porn is going to be banned here. Porn is like libelous speech. We ban libelous speech in America. By the way, libelous speech are lies that are told about somebody to damage their reputation. If that's banned, pornography should be banned on exactly the same principle. Pornography tells lies about women. Yes? With that in mind, there's no real fear, there should be no fear, that this kind of censorship will go overboard and ban other kinds of feminist philosophy or um, sexual reproductive literature. Yeah. So those are a lot of the key points of Longino's argument to ban and censor pornography, mainly because it harms women and tells lies about women in so many terrible ways. See you next time. Bye-bye.